right? Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. You have it? Let's read it, Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. The name of the church and the covenant of Christ. He is the Lord to me who was a sharp on the way of salt. I know that he will say that I am true. Yet he has been made true to my name. He will not announce his faith in me. He will be made as an antichrist, a faithful witness, who was put to death in your city and the other side of the city. Verse 14. Sword. 
What is what was it made? Meant it to use for to rebuke, to encourage, to rebuke Pagan Church, to condemn the world around it, and also to encourage Pagan Church members for doing well where they did well and to rebuke them for associating with the world around them. Hagabot simply means a citadel of Troy or a stronghold. Underline that, a citadel or a stronghold. So when Jesus says, I know where you live, you are living in a place where Satan has his throne. Pagan. It was a, a city founded by a colony of Greek immigrants in the third century BC. It was a very wealthy city, beautiful, affluent city, but also a wicked city, a center for the worship of so many gods. Among those many gods, I will mention four and what they stand for. As the Pius, the Greek god of healing, Dionysus, god of wine, ecstasy, and orgasm. After that, the legendary goddess of war, goddess of weaving, and goddess of wisdom. And fourthly, Zeus, the chief deity of the Greek pantheon. They worship so many gods in Pagabos. The city of Pagabos was famous for its university with a library of about as at that time a library of about 200,000 uh, 200, volumes. This city manufactured parchment resulting in a paper called Pagamena. The atmosphere of the city of Pagamos was adverse to any effective Christian life and testimony. It was not easy to live a Christian life in Pagamos. It was a wicked city. It was, it, it was a city that would bring your Christian value down. It was a city or beat them or join them. Living in the cities or pagans of our own days is not easy either. With all the strange philosophies, demonic ideologies, false teachings, dangerous beliefs and practices all around. So the question comes to us, in what ways could it be said that Satan lives in our cities? In what way can it be said that Satan lives in our countries? In what way can, can it be said that Satan lives in our hearts? Let's take it one by one. Number one, the, let's look at the meaning of a throne. What does a throne mean? I know because we are in a country where we have a monarchy. We have Her Majesty the Queen, and the Queen has a throne, and from that throne, every act. We don't have constitution in England, but we live by acts of Parliament, and for that act or those acts to become laws, the Queen must read it out. The words that come out of the Queen 
becomes law and it becomes unquestioning and it becomes something you cannot take to court to challenge. Now, what does a true means? It is the power of a king or queen. The chair where royalty sits, taking it by none, it means a true means to become a king or a queen. And you can also use it as a verb to rule over you. A throne indicates that a ruler rules over you. A ruler dictates to you. Now, if that is the meaning of a throne, a chair or seat occupied by a sovereign, then, number two, let's look at the symbolism of a throne. What is another word for, for a throne? A throne means sovereignty. It means authority. Don't forget what we are talking about today. Living or living in a city where Satan's throne is set up. So, a throne is in more sovereignty, authority, rule, command, royalty, dignity, power that be, dominion, sovereign power, seat of power. Also, a throne is a symbol of stability. It is a planted seat of power. It is a, a settled place where authority springs. And so, when Jesus said to John, and that John should say to the church in Parliament, I know where you live. I know where you live. Where Satan's throne is set up. Where Satan has his sovereignty. Where Satan has his power. Where words of authority proceed forth from his throne. I know that's where you live. Number three. When. What's number one? The meaning of offer. Number two. If you are not too big for it, you may come for yourself. <laughs> Number two, when you live where Satan rules, when you live where Satan rules, Satan ruled from Pagan. In that, oh by the way, did I tell you that Pagan? The, 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 the city of Pagamos is a modern day Turkey. Okay? Right. Now, he ruled in that the official center of emperor worship in Asia. That, part, that city, Pagamos, was the official center where emperor who was in Rome. God has his power in the nation. Pagans was the center. Rome is in the West. Rome is in Europe. Rome is an European city. And the emperor was in there. But when you get to Asia, the throne of Roman emperor is set, erected in Pagamos. Okay? So, if the devil who is reigning and ruling in, Europe, um, in Rome issues the decree, the carbon copy of the decree will be repeated in Pagamos. So, Jesus is saying, as far as Asian, continent is concerned. 
I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Satan, the prince of this world, according to John chapter 12, verse 31, he is the prince of this world, the arch enemy of God. Satan, who desire to replace God, who desire to overthrow God, you heard of it. Those of you who are at the Sunday school today, huh, it was stated how he plotted coup to overthrow God. What he did then is what he is doing today. If God is reigning in your heart, Satan wants to overthrow you. If God is ruling in your home, it is the plan of the devil to have him overthrow. Satan is slander of God. He slanders God. Huh? He does what? Yeah, he slanders God. When he went to Eve and asked Eve, has God said you must not eat of any of the fruit? Is that what God said? No, 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 no. No. There is something called closed question. And there is another one called open question. A closed question is yes or no answer. But open question is a question that you ask that will make the person to say something. And that is what the devil did. Remember, it's called the ancient science. He knows how to test you and he knows how to bring you down. So he asked, has God said you may not eat of any? That's what God said. Then eat of all the food except. And so what? He cannot say yes. And he cannot say no. He said, she said, we may eat of any of the food except that one. Because the day we eat it, we will die. We will surely die. <laughs> That's what uh, God said. You will surely die. And then Satan took it and said, You will surely not die. Because God knows. God, God is blindfolding you. <laughs> God is so clever. He brainwash, he's brainwashing you. He knows that when you know what you're supposed to know, when you know like him, <laughs> when you have for this hidden knowledge, then what God can do, you can do too. He slandered God. And that's what he does today as well. Let me move on. Satan enslaves people and he turns people against God. Satan entices people. He, he, he entices people with it, uh, so many things such as sex, salary, status. Say with me. Sex, salary, status. Say it again. Sex, salary, status. Let me give you the other way of saying it. Say with me. Pleasure, possession, and position. Say it again. Pleasure, possession, and position. Those are the three things that he uses. That's what he said to Adam and Eve. And when they see me that, ah, uh it's -huh, beautiful to look at pleasure. Says, it makes you wise. Is it not the same thing that he said to, 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 to Jesus? You can draw us, bow down, and then you can turn this to the bread, and then you can jump. It's the same three position, temptation. So when the devil comes to entice you, that's what he did to Pagamos. Wealthy. 
a wonderful city, a beautiful city. That something is beautiful doesn't mean that God is in it. That you are rich, that your job is secure, that you, Satan can bless you if he wants. That's what he said to Jesus. All these things are mine, and I can give it to anyone I want. So that you, you have uh, a couple of uh, thousands of pounds in account. It doesn't mean that you are God. No, 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 no. Uh, blessing is not a sign of God's favor. Not at all. You may be poor, and doesn't mean that God hates you. Poverty is not a sign of God's displeasure. And blessing is not a sign of God's faith. Not at all. And so therefore, when we are praying, and when you look around you, and you say with Nebuchadnezzar, is he not a Babylon that I built with my own hands? There are many Nebuchadnezzar that if not for the grace of God, God could have said today, Today, the world will come to fulfillment. Now, his end, Satan's end, and that of his fallen angels is hell. But he is recruiting as many people as he can to make them children of hell. A time is coming when he will rule through his agent called Antichrist. Jesus spoke of the coming of Antichrist. He says, Dear children, this is the last power that is he said it through his servant, Apostle John. This is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists are born. This is how we know it is the last power. Antichrist has not come. But the spirit of Antichrist is moving, is around, is in the nations, is in the cities, is in the communities, is in your places of war. Satan has his throne set up at Pagamos. He enticed the people with worshipping of idols, commit immor committing immorality, practice false philosophies and ideologies. In the same way as he not set his throne in many of our cities today, as he not set his throne even on the internet. Can we say internet is a city where Satan set his throne? Can we say that many homes is a place where Satan has set his throne? How do we know that? Is it ordinary that all of a sudden a once committed Christian became apathetic? Is it ordinary that a soul out for Christ believer is now all of a sudden materialistic in nature, materialistic in behavior? Is it ordinary? That some profane words proceed from people's mouth. Today, this lackadaisical attitude towards the church is it without a reason. What music do you love to dance to today? What if that music, that particular music, is a music that proceeds from the sovereignty, the sovereign seed? Of Satan that he has set up. What? What is the spirit of the Lord that will be thrown in your heart? And Satan has set his throne in place. I'm asking this question, sir, but I may suggest the answer as time goes by, as I close. What in the words of authority that have been dictated to you is a fact? from that strange throne that has just been erected. What can we say of the anti-marriage, anti-church, anti-Christ spirit 
operating around is it ordinary there are all signs that we are living in the cities where satan has his throne you ridicule god's miracles you tag them in fairy stories virgin birth nonsense crucifixion <laughs> forget it it's impossible Resurrection, or maybe resuscitation. <laughs> Judgment day, ridiculous. Forget about it. Who is going to be the judge? Who, what day? When you die, you die, and that's it. Eat, drink, make merry. Tomorrow, we die. There are so many non Christians that will come up with this attitude. You may say, Christianity. What do I need it for? All pastors are fraudsters. All Christians are liars. You may be right. And maybe if I were not a pastor too, maybe I would be tempted to give up faith. When I think of what many pastors have turned the church of God into, because the Bible says they turn godliness into a means for financial gain. There are many pastors who are in the ministry simply because business is no longer working. And they believe that when you want to have the customers, at least if you have 20, 30, 50, 100, 1,000, 2,000, 1,000, 30,000 people. Wow. And you say, yes, my book. The Lord said, any of you who doesn't write it, who doesn't buy it and read it, in seven days' time, everything will collapse with you. And then all of us, 50,000 people, they bought a cup and they come rich. Now, if pastors are fraudulent, is God also fraudulent? If Christians are liars, is this book also full of lies? Therefore, you have no excuse. It's just because your head has been candle up. It has been colonized with lies by the devil. Because he is a slander. Anything if they could slander God, why will you not slander pastors? Why will you not slander? The Christian and you fell for it. To the Christians, I said, the way you are behaving, I'm not too sure if it is ordinary. Some words that you speak all of a sudden nowadays, I'm not too sure if it is ordinary. What if the spirit uh, uh, or the uh, word of authority that is going from that throne that has been set up is a word that goes in line with him. what Satan does. Let me show you an example. That passage is answered. Some of you, members of Pagans, some of you followed Balaam's teachings. That when you go to Numbers 25 from verses 1 to 2, you will see the Balaam's teaching. That when Israel was sitting, uh, uh, what was that place called? Numbers chapter 25. 25. That's what? Why is Israel strange? And city, that's what it, that's the uh, place that I want. The men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them into worshiping of Baal or P.O. And when you are worshiping the Baal or P.O., you have to indulge in sexual immorality. Remember that for weeks. Balak and Balaam have been trying to curse Israel 
But it didn't work. How can I cause those who have not, God has not caused? How can I denounce those whom God has not denounced? That Lord that God is with them. The shout of the king is in their midst. And Balaam said, make them sin against their God. Turn them against their God. God will turn back. And what happened? According to Balaam's uh, 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 advice, well, how many people died that day? The Bible says uh, the plague against uh, the Israelites was stopped, but those who died in the plague number 24,000. What cause of Balaam could not do? His advice achieved it. And then there was also a heretical group in Pagalot called the Monarchon. So this heretical group, they have similar agreement uh, to the teachings of Balaam and Jezebel. You remember Jezebel? Eh? Jezebel was a woman in the Old Testament, a queen, wife of Ahab, the king. But when we come to the book of Revelation, she has become a spirit. The spirit of Jezebel is ready. Ah, I tend to fear what coronavirus is doing to many Christians. The Bible says in the last days, so, 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 so things will happen. And then among them, the faith of many will go cold. Hmm. Let me ask you this question. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. God is looking for certain people, like Antipas, who was murdered. In a city where Satan rule, in a city where Satan, where Satan is dictating, yet there was a man, Antipas, who said, it doesn't matter. Balaam's teachings are going to follow. Nicolai's teachings, no, it does not for me. Then we are going to kill you. We are going to murder you. We are going to persecute you unless you do as we do. He said, I'm ready to die for the Lord. And they actually killed him. And yet, faith continued. You know, God is looking for people like Antipas. In these days of coronavirus. Hello, Antipas. Who will be faithful to God? Who will serve God with absolute faithfulness? Hmm? I read somewhere. In Psalm 89, verse 14, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. You know that a ruler is known by the virtues that surround his throne. A ruler is known by the virtues that surround his throne. That is why it is concerning the throne of God, righteousness and justice. And the foundation of your throne, love and faithfulness go before you. What about the throne of Satan? Of righteousness, injustice, instead of love, hatred surrounds his throne, instead of faithfulness, infidelity surround his throne. Now, tell me, tell me, if your marriage is full of infidelity. If your marriage is full of hatred, husband hates wife, wife hates husband. If your home is a home of hatred, where children shout, I hate you, where mom calls the day she gets back to a particular child, it is because of the ruler, the one who has his throne in your home. What? If the one who is dictating what you should do is that one on the throne, the throne of injustice, whereby this king of your color determines the kind of treatment 
that you are going to get because injustice surrounds his throne. What if you are mistreated at work because of the color of your skin? Because wherever Satan set his throne, injustice rules. When God set his throne, justice is the foundation of his throne. Where God set his throne, righteousness is the foundation. But wherever Satan is reigning, he is his wanderer, hatred surrounds his throne. And the Bible said to Satan, whoever hates his brother or sister in his heart is a murderer. There are many Christians who can say, you are a murderer. You are a murderer because you keep madness for so many years. You wish your brother or your sister in the Lord to die. You wish your brother or sister in the Lord that everything should collapse for him so that you can have your own way. You are from the throne of Satan. Satan is a liar. What liar? Is he whispering into your ears? What is he telling you to do? From his throne proceed lies. Lies upon lies. The voice from his throne. What kind of voice is he whispering to you? And the problem is this. This is the problem. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. A throne, a scepter, not to last for one week, for one year, for one century, for one thousand. A throne is set up to last forever. How long? Will the devil continue to deceive you? For how long will you follow the lies of the evil one? If he is the one that is inspiring you to do what you are doing, for how long will that continue? Search your heart today. If everyone were hard to give commitment, into the work of God at the same level that you give nowadays, will your church exist? If everyone were to give offerings at the same level that you give nowadays, will your church go on existing? Check today. Check your home. Take good, sweet, perhaps there is a crumb. <laughs> you know what I'm, to, what, 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 what I'm talking about? Because when you want to eat the feast of Passover, you first <laughs> take lantern, check, check everywhere to see that there is no, there's no crumb of yeast. It will destroy everything. Check your marriage today. Check your heart. Check your home. Sweep around your family. Is there a lie of Satan? Is there a whisper from his throne? Is he enticing him to do anything contrary to hope, justice, righteousness, love? and faithfulness from the foundation of God's throne compared to what he said in devil's throne. Stand up, I want you to pray.